times in life where you felt like God closed the door in front of you. Like you were going along, everything was just fine, going according to plan, but then suddenly God closed the door on you. You're in good company this morning. We're going to be looking at a story from the book of Acts in which the Apostle Paul, who is clearly a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit, who was guided and led by the Holy Spirit, even Paul occasionally encountered closed doors. And he had to learn how to see those closed doors not as failures, but really as blessings that helped guide him along the way that God wanted him to go. So let us pray. Lord, we pray that your word this morning would guide us in the way that we should go. Through your word, you would teach us to see closed doors as blessings and to help us to be grateful for them. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So we're going to be reading from Acts chapter 16, starting in verse 6. And they, that is Paul and some of his companions who were with him, they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come up to Mycenae, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So, passing by Mycenae, they went down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Again, this is the word of the Lord. So after Paul's conversion, he was sent by God, by the Holy Spirit, to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. That is, to all of the non-Jews, all of the people in the world who did not know this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so what Paul did is he went on a series of missionary journeys. On the first journey, he went up from Palestine and kind of rounded the corner of the Mediterranean Sea. He went up toward what is modern-day Turkey and Asia Minor and planted several churches along the way. Well, now he's on his second trip. And so Paul and his companions are, first of all, going along to all of those churches they had already started, and they're trying to just check in on them, see how things are going. <coughs> But they're also hoping to go beyond that and plant a few more churches in some other places. So the first thing they try to do is turn and go south to the Roman province of Asia. But the Holy Spirit forbids them. We're not told why. We're just told that the Holy Spirit wouldn't let them go. So they decide to turn around and they try to go north into a region called Bithynia. Then again, the Holy Spirit closed the door on them. The Holy Spirit does that sometimes. Closes doors on us. Our sermon series is about walking with the Spirit, and sometimes walking with the Spirit means that we are going to walk up to doors that are closed. And this is really frustrating for us sometimes, because we thought that walking with the Spirit was going to mean a smoother journey. Maybe we even thought that it would mean a journey without any closed doors at all. It would be nothing but open doors along the way. Walking with the Spirit means that we would land the job that we wanted, we'd get into the school that we wanted, we would age well and not have to deal with sickness and disease. We thought that it was going to be an easier journey. But the truth is that sometimes the Holy Spirit closes the door on some dream or plan that we had for the future. And that's exactly what Asia and Bithynia are. They are the dreams or the plans that we made for the future because, again, we thought we knew where God was leading us. Maybe at some point in the past, God gave us a little bit of general guidance and said, I want you to go this way. So we did. We started off and we drew up a road map complete with a detailed itinerary that would take us to our destination of Bithynia on schedule. Then it turns out we got a little ahead of ourselves. And so the Spirit shows up and says, you're not going to Bithynia yet. Sometimes the Spirit 
closes the door in front of us and sends us in a new direction. And we don't always know exactly what that new direction is right away. But one thing is for sure, we are never going to find that new direction unless we keep moving. When Paul and his companions tried to go into the province of Asia, the door was closed on them, so they kept moving. And they tried to go north into the region of Bithynia. That didn't work, so they kept moving and were told that they passed by Mycia and went down, just really west, to a coastal town called Troas. They kept moving and trying new doors until they finally found one that opened. And there's a saying that you can't steer a large ship unless it's moving. I think the same thing is true for us. The Holy Spirit can't send us in this new direction unless we are moving and we keep trying new doors. A closed door does not mean that we just stand outside in the hallway and do nothing. It means we go down and we try the next door. We apply for another job. We try another medication or another treatment. We try to repair a broken relationship. We keep trying new doors until we find one that opens. And as we keep moving, I think that's what helps us to see these closed doors not just as frustrating setbacks, but actually as blessings that guide us along the way. Closed doors are not meant to defeat us. They're simply meant to change our course a little bit. Kind of like those bumpers that stick up in the bowling alley. <laughs> Which only work, by the way, if the ball is moving. It's not necessarily a failure when we run into a closed door. It's just the Spirit's way of guiding us along the journey. Now, the Holy Spirit guides us in this fashion. Because there is something that God cares far more about than just trying to get you to the right place on time. And that something is you. You are what God cares about most. You know, during life we face all kinds of decisions. Some of them are very difficult decisions. And every decision we face comes with a variety of options from which to choose. And sometimes we think that God's will is all about trying to pick exactly the right option. Almost like we were trying to pick the winning lottery number. But God's will isn't like that. God's will is not just a choice or just a destination. God's will is a way of life. A daily way of life. You see, God cares more about traveling with you on the journey than He does about getting you to exactly the right door at exactly the right time. God's will is never just about having a certain job or marrying a certain person. God loves you way too much to leave it at that. What God's will really is, is simply that you abide in His love every single day, no matter where you're at. Now this means that when we have multiple open doors in front of us, you get to pick. You get to pick which door you want to go through. When it comes to the decisions that we have to make in life, a lot of Christians put themselves through some unnecessary anxiety because, again, they feel like there's one right answer in a sea of wrong answers, and it's up to us to figure out which one that right one is. I say this is unnecessary anxiety because the good news is each one of those options can be a great opportunity to live God's will as a way of life, to abide in His love on a daily basis. Every single one of those options. God's will is waiting for you whether you attend Harvard or West Hills, whether you practice medicine or baseball. And speaking of baseball, as Yogi Berra once said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> Sometimes God really does give us the freedom to simply choose. He is not trying to trick you. <clears throat> his will is simply that you abide in His love no matter which door you choose to go through. Now that includes, by the way, 
some of those doors that take us on some unfortunate detours in life. Doors that take us through doubt and disbelief, anger or abuse or addiction, resentment, any of the things that make us feel like we've gone through the wrong door. Loneliness, grief. When we feel like we're in the wrong place and we've gone through the wrong door, the God whose will is for you to abide in His love is still waiting for you, even if. It's like Paul said in his letter to the Romans, all things, all things work together for good for those who love God. God can use even the wrong doors to lead you back into his love. Now when Paul and his crew finally got to Troas, my guess is they might have started to wonder a little bit whether this second missionary journey was actually the right door for them to go to. I mean, after all, the same Holy Spirit who told them to go and preach to the Gentiles has just shut the door on two of their attempts to do so. So now they're just sitting in Troas, waiting there, wondering which door to try next. And that's when the vision came. We're told that in the middle of the night, Paul had a vision in which a man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you this morning feel like you're just kind of waiting for God to give you a new vision for where to go with your life. You're tired of trying door after door after door and finding them all locked. And so now you're, you're in Troas, just waiting, wondering which door to try next. And nobody ever starts out wanting to go to Troas. <laughs> you don't plan to go to Troas. You just kind of end up there. It's the last option after all the other doors are closed. But Troas is also exactly where God wants you to be. You see, for Paul and the others, it may have seemed like Troas was the end of the road. But for God, it was just the beginning of something far bigger than Paul or any of his companions could have ever planned on or imagined. And that's because it turns out that Troas was the launching point for the expansion of Christianity into Europe for the first time. That trip that took them from Troas to Macedonia was less than 100 miles by boat, but it was from one continent to the next. And as Christianity went to Europe, it also went further from there and came eventually to the United States and even here to the more Presbyterian Church this morning. You never know what God is going to do when you feel like you just ended up somewhere. It's also that trip that they took over to Macedonia. It's also where we get five of Paul's letters that we wouldn't have otherwise. From that trip come the letter to the Philippians, his two letters to the Thessalonians, and his two letters to the Corinthians. I thank God for that. Without that trip, we would not have those. And you see, the point of this is, God is the one who eventually makes sure that we end up right where he wants us. So, Wherever you have ended up this morning, take comfort in the fact that all the closed doors you have run into in the past are just part of the Holy Spirit's way of guiding you along the journey. After all, you, you don't get to Macedonia through a map or a strategic plan. That's not what Macedonia is. Macedonia is the place that God sends you after you have learned to daily abide in his love and to see those closed doors not just as failures but as opportunities to worship, as opportunities to get to know this God who travels with you better. That's what the closed doors are all about. And once, once we have gone through all the wanderings, all the detours, and all the closed doors, it is God who makes sure that we eventually end up right where he wants us. 
maybe this morning we can all learn to be a little bit more grateful for those times when God has closed doors on us. Trusting that they are only meant to bring us closer to the Word made flesh in Jesus Christ, the Word who is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.